Today I'm going to answer a question from a student. That student is Kevin F. And the question is, can you analyze vacuum tube circuits using conventional current? And the answer is, yes you can. When vacuum tube circuits were ubiquitous, it was not uncommon to analyze them with conventional current. However, back in those days, it was much more common to use electron flow to analyze circuits. It was no less confusing, which is why today almost everybody uses conventional current to analyze circuits. With conventional current, we have current flowing from positive to negative or high pressure to low pressure, which makes more sense than current flowing from a low pressure to a high pressure. So it's just easier to wrap our minds around it, which is why virtually everyone uses conventional current to analyze circuits these days. So let's take a look at how vacuum tubes work and see why we might think we can't analyze them with conventional current, and then we'll see that we actually can. So a vacuum tube is a glass vessel that has had the air taken out. In a schematic, we draw that as a circle. We, well, you've probably seen them. They just look like little glass cylinders that are rounded at both ends with pins on the bottom so we can make connections to them. Inside that tube is a filament, like the filament of a light bulb. In fact, the invention of the vacuum tube stemmed from the development of the light bulb when some people noticed, several people noticed that there appeared to be something streaming from that filament and coating the glass. And eventually it was discovered that you could make electrons flow from that filament to a plate inside. So let's go ahead and draw that. Let's make that filament hot by putting some kind of a power supply on there. I'll just put a little battery on there for now. That gets that glowing so it's hot. And so when that gets hot, a lot of the electrons in the molecules that make up this filament are going to disassociate and try to float away. And if there was air inside here, those electrons would just attach themselves to air molecules and nothing special would happen. But with a vacuum in here, those electrons leave the filament. Uh, some people say they boil off, which I suppose that's a good way to put it. Uh, but they have nowhere to go because there's just a vacuum in there. So they just kind of float around the filament. So we have a cloud of electrons floating around there. So the next thing we do is we put a plate in there, a plate of metal. In the real construction, we would have the filament in the middle and the plate would be a cylinder around the filament. But in the schematic, we draw it this way and it's easier to draw what's going on, drawing it like the schematic. So here we go. Let's put a strong positive voltage on there. So we put a battery out here in our imaginary circuit here to see how it works. And this is going to be many tens of voltages to hundreds of volts, but let's not worry about what it is exactly. Uh, let's go ahead and notice that we have a positive voltage here and a negative voltage down here. So that's going to cause these electrons to stream toward that plate from the cathode to the anode, which is the way electrons flow in any circuit, uh, whether it's solid state or a tube circuit. So electrons go cathode to anode. And so uh, if we reverse this battery, the negative voltage here is just going to repel the electrons away. So the electrons can only flow one direction. So we have a vacuum tube diode here. It's a check valve, just like the solid state diode, where current can only flow in one direction. It cannot flow the opposite direction. Now let's turn this into a triode, which can amplify. So let's get our clutter out of the way here. And we're going to put a control grid inside there. And schematics is drawn as a dashed line connected to the outside. And a real vacuum tube, basically it's a spiral of wire around the filament between the filament and the plate. More sophisticated tubes, such as tetrodes and pentodes, have more grids to give better control of the electron flow. Or just look at the triode because that's the simplest type of vacuum tube that can amplify. So, if this is unenergized, those electrons are going to flow right through as long as this battery's in place here. But if we put a negative voltage here, it's going to block those electrons. So we can use a negative voltage to block the flow, either turn it on or off. Or if we put just the right amount of negative voltage here, we can moderate the flow of electrons. So typically this is going to go to some negative voltage somewhere. And it's going to be roughly a tenth of the voltage of the plate voltage. But I. I have not gone deep into vacuum tube design, so don't ask me too many questions about it. But if I remember correctly, about a tenth of that, but it can vary and uh, I can't really go deep into the into the design because I'm really not well versed on that. But there we have it, a negative voltage. Let's get that out of the way. And this negative voltage, we want to put it at just the right amount to maybe have uh, half of the 
maximum flow flowing through there. So let's say we're making a class A amplifier where we want that flow to be able to go higher or lower. So we put that negative charge there just so we get the moderate flow, the nominal flow right in the middle and we can make that go up or down. So now let's put an input over here. We need a capacitor to separate our input from our DC voltages. And now we can put an alternating current here. And what's going to happen? When this voltage here goes more positive, in the positive half of the input cycle, that's going to push down the negative voltage here, and this will become less negative, and we get more current flow. And then when this goes to the negative side of its cycle, that's going to make this more negative and block the flow. So we're going to get more flow, less flow, more flow, less flow as our sine wave goes in there. So there's a very, very basic amplifier. I don't have any kind of an output. Uh, chances are this would go to a transformer and do some kind of other amplifier stage. I'll just show it going directly to a speaker because I can. There we go. And there's the output as the current varies in this loop. We get a varying current in this transformer, which varies the current in the speaker. And there you go. We have amplification. So. When we analyze how a vacuum tube works, we've watched the electrons go from the cathode to the anode. So we have electron flow going from negative to positive. So how can you analyze a vacuum tube with conventional current? And the answer is just the same way we do with transistors. When we look at transistor circuits, we don't imagine all of the majority carriers and minority carriers and junctions and everything that's going on in the transistor. Now, nah, well, let's just draw real quick an easy transistor circuit here. A simple common emitter circuit. In fact, let's go ahead and draw this the same way we did the vacuum tube circuit because it would be very similar. As similar as possible because we can. So there's a positive voltage. It's an NPN transistor. So our conventional current is going to flow in that direction. And here's the base input. Just to make this as similar as possible, let's go ahead and put our capacitor there. There's our input. And this is going to go to some positive voltage. And it's going to be just the right voltage or to create just the right current. It's going to be a little more complicated than this, but bear with me here. So that this is operating in its nominal range. We have about the middle of the amount of current we can have. And therefore, as this goes more positive, we get a higher voltage here. Therefore, we get more base current and therefore more collector current. As this goes more negative, that pulls this voltage down. And so we get less current and less base current and less collector current. So, and we're just looking at conventional current because that's what we usually do with transistors. So greater voltage here means greater base current. Greater base current means greater collector current. And we're looking at this all in conventional current. So let's just pull this out and replace it with a vacuum tube. And just like we don't look at the insides of a transistor when it's operating, we don't have to look at the insides of a vacuum tube. So let's just draw a circle. There's our connections. I'm not drawing the filament because even in tube schematics, you don't draw the filament in the schematic. We know it's there. So there's our cathode, there's our anode, there's our grid, and it's going to be slightly different in how it works. This is going to go to some negative voltage. And as this goes more positive, this becomes less negative. And as that positive voltage goes up, I'm going to get more current through the tube. Well, I'm just using conventional current. More positive, higher voltage on the grid means more current from the plate to the filament or from the uh, anode to the cathode because conventional current goes anode to cathode. So there we go. Conventional current. More positive, it blocks the electrons less, therefore more current. More negative, it blocks the electrons more, so less current. So higher voltage, greater current, lower voltage, less current. And there we are using conventional current to analyze the vacuum tube circuit. Like I say, uh, back in the day when these were ubiquitous, uh, scholars and uh, engineers often used conventional current to analyze the circuits, but it was much more common to use electron flow because people couldn't take their minds off of the electrons inside the tube. But if you ignore that, 
which you really can once you get to the circuit level. We don't need to know what's going on in the tube. It's very easy to use conventional flow. And now we have such things as we put a resistor in here. Now, as we have current flowing through that resistor, the voltage backs up where the current goes in, which is what we expect. We get a clogged drain, you get a backup behind it. We try to push current in, we get a higher voltage here, lower voltage there. All the things I do to explain how circuits work using conventional current now work even with the vacuum tube because we are using conventional current to analyze the circuit instead of having to think, well, this goes more negative, less positive, and, and having to uh, uh, do gyrations to analyze the circuit. We can just use our intuition where we have higher pressure, lower pressure, current goes that way, and payday is Friday. So there you have it, conventional current analyzing a vacuum tube circuit. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible and a big thank you to everyone for watching.